So maybe you're like me and you've been sleeping on Rom V's Detective Comics. Let's fix that. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and these are my thoughts on Ram V, or excuse me, Ram V's Detective Comics run so far. Um, as of this recording, the most recent issue to release has been issue 1070, and I pretty much binge read all nine issues over the course over the course of two days about a week ago. So, really interesting stuff going on. Um, but I guess just for some background, so. Rom V started his run on Detective Comics back in July 2022 with issue 1062. And um, I remember reading it and thinking, huh, this is deep and this is interesting. It's intriguing. Um, but just two weeks earlier, we got the debut of Chip Zdarsky on the mainline Batman title with his failsafe storyline. And to me, the failsafe fail safe storyline was a bit more accessible, a bit more exciting. And so as the months went on, uh, I read failsafe, you know, basically, you know, faithfully and Detective Comics kind of basically flew under my radar and sort of out of my reading pile, even though I was still picking it up after all this time. Well, fast forward about six months and the second story arc in Chip Zdarsky's Batman run to me lost a little bit of steam. And so here recently I decided, well, let's go back and see what we've been missing with Detective Comics. Is it good? Is it bad? What's going on? And so, like I said, I binge read uh, the nine issues, 1062 through 1070. And now here we are with my thoughts. And um, I'm going to do my best not to spoil anything. But in case you're one of those people that want no information about the plot, here's my TLDR thoughts. Uh, this is a slow burn. It's a slower read. It is incredible character study on pretty much everyone involved, but specifically Batman, Harvey Dent, and Mr. Freeze as well. So really cool stuff going on there. Um, it's got a bit of a supernatural vibe to it, which is why it was a little bit difficult for me to access, to access uh, in my opinion. Um, but it's not the type of book that you like should read in a stack of a million other books. Like there's so much world building. There's so much lore building in this series that honestly, I feel like the best way to digest it is all at once by itself. And if you do that, you're going to be chewing on this run for a bit of time, but it's going to be one of the best meals you ever had. That makes any sense. So all in all, my, uh, rating for it. I give it a solid eight out of 10 and I highly recommend you check it out. Now, if you want to know why I think that, keep watching this video. So we open up this series with issue 1062. And like I said, this series has a bit of a supernatural bend from the very beginning. We open up with Bruce basically either having a nightmare or being visited by uh, the, the spirit or the demon Barbatos. Now I actually had to do some research and figure out what this was or who this was because I had never read anything featuring Barbatos. Well, for those who don't know, Barbatos was basically like this bat God demon thing who claims to have been the bat that Bruce Wayne saw that inspired him to be Batman all, all those years ago. So it could be argued that Barbatos's dark influence has been guiding Bruce Wayne under the radar for years. And some of that stuff kind of comes to head to a head in Dark Knight's Metal. Um, but again, I've not read e either of those storylines. And so your mileage may vary, but that's what I had to get caught up on. But anyway, we begin the book with with that sort of an encounter um, and we're starting. We get introduced to a few new characters, right? Uh, the Orgum family, the Orgum family uh, basically are early, not descendants, ancestors of the Arkham family. Uh, and basically we're learning about this ancient family with long, long standing ties to Gotham. 
who have basically come to reclaim Gotham. And I think this is where the run is really smart because Rom V is picking up on threads that directly happened in Detective Comics. Arkham Tower or Arkham Asylum got destroyed during Detective Comics and all these different things uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, but basically, the Oregons have come back like, look, you're not going to like just erase our namesake and our history from this city. We're going to come back and we're going to like rename, remake things in our image. And so the Orgum family comes back and that incites conflict. Um, and with the Orgums come a whole like just weirdly like supernatural, weird isn't the right word, but this supernatural presence that is helping them to take over the city. And I'll kind of stop short to avoid spoiling anything. But all we got it, all we really need to know is that the Orgums are a, a, a family with a long history and long ties to Gotham and their ties are supernatural in nature. So that's one front. They're coming up against Talia and the League of Assassins for reasons unknown. And that's another thing we got going on. Um, and then, and then on top of all of that, uh, Batman just seems to be like outsmarted at every turn, whether he's chasing, uh, the League of Assassins around, whether he's trying to figure out what's going on with the forces, uh, of Orgum's family and, and their motivations and their ties. And through all of that, we're getting, uh, in interactions with some key members of the rogues gallery, it, that being Harvey Dent, aka Two Face, as well as Victor Freeze, Mister Freeze. Um, and where I think this series shines is in its character work with each of those villains. Right, we've got this really cool story going on with Mr. Freeze. And, you know, it's the classic Mr. Freeze storyline where it's like, hey, is Harvey in control or is Two-Face in control? And do they switch? Do they not? Who wins once and for all? Why do they win? How do they win? Cool. That's dope. With Mr. Freeze, the storyline is a little bit different because, um, for the longest time, Mr. Freeze has been one of those sympathetic villains where it's like, look, he's just trying to save his wife. Well, if you were reading uh, Detective Comics during the Peter J. Tomasi years, uh, then you'll know there have been significant developments in Freeze's research with his wife, Nora. And I'll leave it at that. This takes the result of those developments and really, really puts it pushes it into an interesting place uh, that is asking us questions about Freeze, about his motivations. And for me, the thing that made this like just amazing, there is a comparison made between Batman and Mr. Freeze that I was like, why did no one think of this before? How did we not see this? And I'm like, all right, all right, Rom V. All right, you got me. You got me. I had to wade through the murky supernatural waters, but I am fully on board for whatever is going on in this series. Now, uh, we've got all of that and and um, without spoiling, there is a sort of undercurrent in this book that kind of reminds me of what Scott Snyder did with the Court of Owls, right? That is giving Batman a new adversary, a new challenge, but one that has been under his nose the entire time. It's like, dang, like, how did Bruce not know what was happening? How did Bruce not see what was going on? And how is he going to overcome something that's been a part of this mythos for such a long time and has such a head start over him? Um, and man, we're, we are headed toward a face off between the Orgums and the League of Assassins, which is going to be very cool to watch uh, play out. Uh, and we're in the middle of some deep questions that Bruce has to answer for himself, that Freeze has to answer for himself, that Harvey has to answer for himself. And I'm like, this is dope. This is dope. Uh, and so, like I said, I think what is really working 
about this series for me is just how deep the lore building goes. But with that said, it's not handheld. You're, you're not being handheld throughout the series. Um, it's not something that you're going to get all in like, you know, one or two issues with neat recaps, you know, between this is a slower story that builds on itself over a lot of time. I mean, we are what, 10 months in nine, 10 months in. And we, I feel like we're just getting to a point where it's like, okay, for me, this is must read comics every month. I got to see what's going on here. Um, but make no mistake, the book was good the whole time. Uh, the analogy that I've made is like, you know, if comics are like food, then there are certain comics that feel like fast food and they taste good and they're satisfying and you eat them real quick. And, you know, you might get hungry again another hour later, even though you had a whole Big Mac, large fries, like what the heck, right? This, if, if let's say Chip Zdarsky's uh, Batman is fast food, uh, then Detective Comics is like those like gourmet, like five, six, seven course meals where every course tastes good, but you're kind of frustrated depending on what you're looking for. If you, you know, they bring your plate out and you've got like three green beans, a little dollop of mashed potato and like, I don't know, little lamb chop bites. It's like, yeah, it all tastes good, but who's getting full off of this? Right. And it's not until the full course is done that you're like, man, that was an experience from the acidity on the salad to the creaminess of the potatoes. The dessert was sweet with notes of bitterness and, and so on. And you're like, wow, that was a great meal as opposed to hmm, that was good. That was satisfying. That was that was a qu nice, quick hit. Let me go back on to what I need to do. And the way I read comics, just depending on what's going on, I mean, I'm busy, man. I got a wife, I got two kids. So a lot of times when I'm reading comics, I just want a quick 10 minute fix. Oh, here was a fun story. Here was a cool story. Um, and that's not what you're getting with Rom V's Detective Comics. This is a book that demands that you pay attention. It's a book that demands that you make time and space mentally for it. And it rewards you as a reader for taking the time to sit with it is the best way I can articulate that. It's a really good book with really good character work, with really good world building. And that's not even to mention the art between Raphael Albuquerque and Stefano Raphael. Hopefully I'm saying all these names right. That's amazing. And I haven't even really touched on a lot of the backup stories, although I will say the backup stories weave in and out of the main narrative in a way that no other DC backups are doing. And I really appreciate that because so often the backups just feel like an afterthought or like throwaway material to stuff a book. That is not how these backups are. So you better be reading them. Cy Spurrier is building on. He's taking those supernatural themes that Rom is planting and he's taking them even further in the backups. There is a new character that I think you're going to enjoy. And if all that wasn't reason enough to pick up the book, Jim Gordon's back in action in a way that's different than he's been in action before, but in a way that makes total sense and is very satisfying to read. So look, I think, I mean, I've been talking for about 15 minutes. I've sung the praises of Rom V's Detective Comics enough. Like I said, it's a solid eight out of 10 for me, maybe even a nine if you sit and chew on it long enough. My only knock against the series really is just that for my personal taste, I like a book that kind of, I don't know, gets to it a little bit quicker. But now that we're here, we are here. And so if you liked, say, the Grant Morrison Batman run, I think you'll enjoy this where it's like seeds being planted all along. If you're someone who liked, say, like the Chris Claremont X-Men run, seeds being planted all along, being paid off over time. This is that type of run. And I don't know how long it's going to go. I don't know when it's going to end, but I'm going to enjoy the ride. And so if you like me, have been sleeping on Rom V's Detective Comics. You got to wake up, dog. <laughs> and that's it. So 
Thanks for watching this video. By the way, if you like uh, these deep dive sort of I binge read a comic reviews, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I'll do more of them because there are plenty of series that I need to get caught up on. I'm thinking the next one I do is Radiant Black, but just let me know. And uh, we'll get some stuff on the schedule. Huge thanks to all the channel family members who make content on comics are dope possible. You guys are the real MVPs. I'll see you in another video real soon. Till then, I don't know what you're reading. Maybe it is Detective Comics. Whatever it is, hopefully it's something dope. Peace.